Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and doing a quick compare video between a modified sine wave or modified square wave inverter versus a pure sine wave inverter. Specifically, you probably have heard this particular term used. It is live neutral. Typically in your house, you have these duplex outlets here. You have the neutral, you have your earth ground, and then you have your hot. Now in your main panel of your house, your neutral and your earth ground are bonded together, and that's normal. And what happens with a modified sine wave, which is in my Schumacher SJ1332 jump pack, you have what's called a live neutral. And the reason why they call it a live neutral is because not only do you have 123 volts from neutral to hot, but you also have half that voltage between neutral and your earth ground lug and between hot and your neutral ground lug. And this is why if you were to ever connect something like this to a house you short your neutral and your earth ground together which is how it's set up in your main panel of your house you are going to destroy that inverter unit inside so here we have a 40 watt incandescent bulb connected to neutral and what we'll do is we have 123 volts coming out between hot and neutral which the bulb is going to light up all the way you see it's about 36 watts However, the live neutral means that the neutral in respect to the earth ground has half of the line voltage. So you see the light lights up more dimly. And as you can see here between earth ground and hot, the light turns on dimly as well. So you do not want to short your neutral and ground wires on a modified sine wave. Now, for a pure sine wave inverter, you can, if it's not already done, this one does not have GFI outlets on this. So this came originally as a floating neutral, meaning that the earth ground was not tied to anything and the neutral was not tied back to the DC and such as to the negative terminal of the battery. But I modified that because I want my neutral and ground to be common and it's tied back to the DC negative terminal of the battery. For grounding purposes, it also shunts any EMI and RFI to ground back through the battery. And as you can see here, we have our neutral, and then the bulb does not light up because they are common. I go between neutral and hot, and then you have the bulb lighting up at full brightness. As well, since ground and neutral are common, this is what would not happen if you had GFI. So if GFI, if you had a GFI outlet here, as soon as I turn that, connected it between earth ground and hot, this would immediately trip because it's not supposed to have current flowing on the ground conductor. But since we don't have that, it will not trip. So it's very important to understand that distinction between the two. Total harmonics distortion for a modified sine wave or modified square wave inverter at best will be about 25% total harmonic distortion. It will not get any lower than that. As you start to load this inverter down, the step square wave or step sine wave will start to actually look more like a square wave and you will see the total harmonic distortion typically increase. Now a full on square wave is 48.3% total harmonic distortion and that is just horrendous when you look at it on a scope but i have my amp probe 54 nav clamp meter here and we're going to look at the total harmonic distortion of this jumper packs inverter so as you can see we have true rms of 124 volts coming out of the inverter but when we look at total harmonic distortion what we'll do is we'll take off this auto sense and set it to total harmonic distortion you're going to see without a load, we are at 27.2% total harmonic distortion. And that number would likely only increase as you add a load to this particular inverter. Again, these modified sine waves are okay for some devices, but for any kind of sensitive devices, this would not fly. So let's take a look at the pure sine wave inverter. Now, as you can see, with a pure sine wave inverter, we are getting a total 
of 0.5% total harmonic distortion. That is a very clean output. Now, the only other issue that I've done uh, in previous videos is show that this inverter has a lot of EMI and RFI in the higher frequency range that can be filtered out. And this meter would not show that. But the harmonic distortion of the fundamental 60 hertz and all of its harmonics up to the 25th harmonic is very, very clean. So this is in fact better than what is on the utility. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. This is one of many videos that I'm going to be talking about total harmonic distortion. And especially on generators, I did have these two different types of inverters to give you guys an idea of what some of the differences are. But thank you guys again for the support and for watching my channel. Till the next time.